Hugh Ellington and his orchestra. This is Walter Cronkite reporting, and what we propose to do for the next half hour is to have you listen to one of the greats of the world of jazz, the Duke, Duke Ellington, as he swings through Japan. Thank you, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for such a warm welcome. You're very beautiful, very sweet, very gracious, very generous, and all the kids in the band want you to know that we do love you manly. This is our story, Duke Ellington. Sixty-five years, Duke Ellington has traveled more than two million miles across the face of America. But his renown, like that of other unhonored prophets among us, is perhaps even greater abroad. Responding to appeals from overseas, the State Department in 1963 sent him to tour the Middle East. The following year, on his own, Duke and his 14 extraordinary musicians made this trip to Japan. Thank you. 
48 years of playing in nightclubs, theaters, and concert halls, for roustabouts, royalty, and rock and rollers, Ellington has maintained the public urbanity and the sartorial splendor, which earned him the nickname Duke as a youngster in Washington, D.C., where he grew up. His admirers span two generations and four continents. And those who cannot understand the American language respond to the message of his music. A man who hates to hurry, loves to laugh. A notorious avoider of strife and unpleasantness. A hypochondriac of sorts. A privately religious man. Ellington goes his own way. Not many people know the Edward Kennedy Ellington who lives behind a facade of light banter and self-deprecation. Even old friends like baritone saxophonist Harry Carney affirm that there are two Ellingtons and one of them is shared with others only in his music. His fan club includes most of the other greats of jazz, and many of them have paid him the ultimate compliment of incorporating his ideas into their own work. No other musician has so thoroughly left his mark on the quality of American popular music, a fact hardly noted by the public which thinks of him principally as a writer of memorable tunes. Outside the faction-ridden jazz scene, musicians of classical persuasion have paid their respects by evaluating his efforts not as jazz, but as music. In an age when to survive is to be commercial, Ellington has endured miraculously by being himself. Although he began as a jazz pianist composer of the Soda Fountain Rag, Ellington's real instrument is his orchestra. A superb group he has never disbanded in 37 years, during which the band business has flourished and declined. Musical life is the traveling life. Typically, the Ellington tour of Japan, including Tokyo, Hiroshima, Osaka, Kyoto, Koba, and Nagoya, meant no great innovation in a day's routine. This life on the move, with its passing friendships and fleeting glimpses of the countryside, has been the death of many musical groups and some performers. But it can have its rewards, and the hardy Ellington regulars like Johnny Hodges, Harry Carney, Lawrence Brown, and Cootie Williams have survived the years to reap substantial financial returns from an organization which long has grossed one million dollars a year from performances and recording income. But life off the stand centers about the train, the bus, and the hotel room. So it is no happenstance that a number of the Ellington compositions are musical evocations of that lonesome train whistle in the night and the clickety-clack of rails that have no end. Now continue with the 20th century, Duke Ellington swings through Japan.
Igor Stravinsky came to New York in the 1930s, his first interest was a trip to Harlem to hear what he called the marvelous jazz symphonies of Duke Ellington. In the years that have followed, Ellington, impatient of pigeonholing music by categories, has denied that his creations are jazz. My men and my race are the inspiration of my work, he has said. Jazz may have had more of a Negro character when it first was finding an audience, says Ellington, but jazz has become a part of America. There are only two kinds of music, good and bad. With the staff arranger and collaborator of 25 years, Billy Strayhorn, Ellington now has ranged the field to find inspiration in the music and culture of other lands. And the Japanese shrine at Kyoto will find its way into an Ellington Far Eastern suite in the making. Ellington musical imagination has long since burst the bonds of the 32-bar popular song form to create musical scores for Broadway and Hollywood and concert works of extended length. But there always will be a place for those Ellington melodies the music business calls pop standards.
ain't what they used to be is the musical comment to mark the close of an Ellington performance. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for the wonderful way you've inspired us this evening. You're very beautiful, very sweet, very gracious, very generous. All the kids and sad ones you know that we do love you. Thank you. We'll love to see you tomorrow. Yeah. For many Americans of this generation, Edward Kennedy Ellington, with his enduring talent, has helped to preserve the happy illusion that somehow things still are what they used to be.